Hey guys, how are we all doing? Me, I've been awake since two o'clock in the morning. Don't ask me why. Um, we're gonna play maybe one, maybe two rapid games, we'll see. Rated 1477, because I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and I pulled out my iPad and I decided to play a bunch of games and I lost, I think, eight in a row because I was tired. All due to silly blunders and stuff like that, so anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm playing, I've gone back to the, um, the Scotch Bonnet. It's this interesting variation of the Goering Gambit, and if they take the second pawn here, then, uh, playing Queen B3. Because your opponent has thought they're getting into a Scotch, and now they're kind of in a Danish, but it's a, it's a twist on the Danish. Because the Goering Gambit, you have these knights out, which you don't in the Danish. So, they very often have to stop for a think, which is no bad thing. You can even pre-move bishop takes b2, which will sometimes happen. Not always. They really shouldn't carry on gobbling pawns. The issue with uh, pawn takes and then bishop takes c2 is that black does have this knight h6 idea to defend f7, right? In, in the case of you bringing your bishop out to battery with your queen. But you can see here, my opponent is already a minute behind on the clock. And with a no increment time format, you know, it's okay. You always have to watch, watch out for this uh, knight fork as well. Now, if the, if the d-pawns ever move, then this knight fork is, is not so much of an issue. Because knight goes there and then queen has this or this, right? Okay. This is unusual. This is unusual. Um... I think bishop c4 now, immediately threatening this. And he's got two options. That is one, but it doesn't work. Because I take, take, boom. Linking us to move. And that ain't going to be pretty, right? This is the other option. And what, whenever you see that, you're going to do this, I think. is basically the, uh, the rule. Now he does now have knight a5, has to be said. In which case I kind of have to go here, and I'll probably take my bishop, I'll take back. You know. But I've got one, two, three pieces out on the board. At the cost of a pawn. I'm also ready to castle, which my opponent is not. Okay, and there we go, there we have it. So, you can consider this, but then queen takes... What you gonna do? I also have this as well, the queen can come to either, either square. It doesn't really make much difference. He's gonna take the bishop anyway. So I don't know if, you know, have I missed something there? I don't know. I'm still threatening knight d5, hitting both the queen and c7 with a, a fork threat. Um, oh, in fact, I'm not threatening c7 because the bishop defends that. But the downside of the bishop here is that he's blocked off the d-pawn, and that is blocking off the light squared bishop. So my objective here is to castle. I'd imagine we're going to get knight f6. Knight f6, I could pin the knight and then... Ooh, okay. Looking like we're going to get the fianchetto. So. I can castle immediately. The issue here is if he does put his bishop there and I move this pawn, he could end up boom. Don't know if I, if I like the look of that. I can go in with a with the uh, with a knight immediately, right? Now that does a no, it doesn't it doesn't at all. Queen defends e4, so that's good. Right, so I'm not giving my opponent time to rest here. Now, as we've said, the bishop defends c7, so the queen doesn't have to. But where else is she going to go? Because all of these squares are out. All of those squares are con controlled by my knights. Okay. Now I can carry on attacking the queen with development here. That would run into f6. I don't know about knight f6. If if knight f6 I can take once pawn takes. So that's okay, but then I have... It's a tempo move, then I have to move my bishop. But it does take away the development square for the knight. And is the knight going to go here? It probably would, actually. So I, I think castles now makes some sense. He still can't castle immediately. If he castles there, I can wipe him out. 
If he castles here, I can wipe him out. Uh, I don't know if I would. I'll probably pin him, actually. Yeah, he's getting a bit uncomfortable about the presence of that knight. Okay, so what do I do? Do I come back here? I'd like to, my knight to be focusing on there. Um, can come back here or here. Can't. Could go there as well, actually. Is he going to trade his bishop? Is that a good square? I think probably he wouldn't trade his bishop. But is it a good square? Well, it targets. That's undefended. Well, what about this? You know, let you take my knight. I take here. He's got no bishop there. Is that a possibility? C3 takes takes. Now he's got this, hasn't he? He's got queen there. Defends the rook. So I'm going to retreat. Question is, which of these squares? I don't think it's c3. Where do I want to go next? That might be a good square, actually. It's, it's defended by a pawn. Yeah. A knight might come in. Well, actually, the bishop doesn't defend that g5 anymore. But knight here looks nice. It attacks the bishop that's Currently undefended, attacks this. And the bishop can't go there because my knight guards that square. Okay, I, I like that move. Still like it. I'm not worried about this because I can knight takes. Right, I'm hitting this. I'm hitting this. The only way to defend both is that. And that doesn't work. So the whole the whole idea here is... If you can prevent black from castling. It's just like in the Danish. It's, it's a twist on the Danish. A Danish twist. If you can prevent black from castling, that is a strategic win. Uh, not a win-win. doesn't mean you win, but it's, it's definitely a good thing. Um, this doesn't work. I might could play rook one as well. But you can see now, you know, black is uncomfortable. Okay. Oh, he's got that anyway. Eh. Right, you are. Okay, do I want to around? I think I do. I think I do. Queen takes. Now I have like f4. I like f4. With tempo. Might threaten this, you know? Where's the queen gonna go? Is she gonna go all the way back here? Well, that doesn't work because it drops the pawn. Yeah, that's defended. She can't go there, she can't go there. She can't go there, she can't, you know. Where are you gonna go? Here? Defends that, and defends that, actually. Here, I can't push the pawn because it hangs the knight. I think we, that's what we're gonna see. <clears throat> that is what we're gonna see. Why isn't he playing it immediately? I feel like I need to get my bishop out. Maybe something like this, actually. Something as simple as that. Uh, but that kind of hangs the pawn, but also it hangs that, so... If queen takes. I can't push this pawn because it actually hangs the rook. And I can't move with check. Ah! Oh! Counteraction. Okay. Okay. There's a few places I can go. Hang on, let's think about... I take queen, you take queen. We've both got double pawns. I take this with check. <sighs> He's a pawn up. I've got two pawns in the middle. He's got awkward pawns. I don't know if I'm any worse off there, you know. I take queen, you take queen. I could go here and win the other bishop, or I could go here and win the pawn. King has to move, l loses castling rights. And I've opened up the f-file. I'm doing it. I'm having it. You have to take the queen. There's no question, right? 
I win a I win the pawn back, yes. So he's still a pawn up, now he isn't. Okay, and still he's got a bad bishop. In fact, all his junk is still on the back row. Okay. I don't have that because knight can take, so I think I have to come back to f5. This pawn is actually in a pin. It should be noted. I could come back here as well. There takes... I want to I wanna stop this bishop, so I think I want to come here, don't I? Yeah? Keep this pawn shut in. Now, I have the safer king. We've both got dodgy pawns, but my pawns are arguably less dodgy than his. He's actually got four pawn islands. Right. Okay, I'm doing this. I'm now attacking that twice as well. E. All hail the Scotch Bonnet Gambit. Okay. Now, he's threatening to move the pawn and attack the rook. Now, if I do this, he can actually do that. So do I have to move the rook with check? King can't actually go there or there. So, oh, it wins the knight. I declare it wins the knight. Because he can't take, he can't go there, he can't go here, right? That is the only legal move because he can't take the rook and I get the knight and we're laughing. And resigns. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's have a quick review. <sighs> like the Scotch bonnet. Nobody plays it. An 85 accuracy from me. One miss. What was that? Let's find out. And in a minute it's going to say, yeah, hunty, it was all right, but you should have taken... It's, it always says you should take with a knight. You know? But it's 0.4 points difference. The point is I'm going for surprise here. And this is not great, you know? Oh, you see, what are you saying that? This isn't great. Remember, this bishop was shut in for the whole game, okay? Best move, excellent, thank you very much. Knight takes, excellent. It's saying you can't really, there is nothing really better. That's a great move, that's a great move, that's a great move, that's a great move. That's a great move, and that's a blunder. And what did I miss? Come on. What did I miss? It loses material. Is it e5? We should can't go there. Show me. It was e5. Well, bloody hell. Okay, but what if I just bishop here? Bishop g5 then, hitting the queen. Interesting, plus five look for white. I'm a pawn down and it's plus five. Because all my pieces are flying out. That's what you've got to do in these gambits. And if he just does this, then we, we just take and open everything up. That's okay. So let's go back. So I have to queen there. I should have ploughed on. I, I chose the castle, yes. Which was a miss. But white is still better. I'm still plus 1.5. Tax the knight. And shouldn't have gone that... I should, oh, it's again e5. Again he wants e5. But then after pawn takes... Attacking the rook and the bishop twice. Missed that. Okay, anyway. So he does this. I retreat. That's a miss as well. Should have played bishop c5. Whatever. I like that move. f4 was a good move. I could have dived out of the way and uh, and threatened. Well, it's not threatening that because knight defense. Oh, 
It wants me to go here with the fork, but I grabbed the free stuff. And now it's plus six, look. Ooh, saying get the bishop involved in the game. And that is just actually mate in five as well. There you go. The spicy Scotch bonnet. Love it. And, um, you know, who sees this? No one sees it. That's the point. Um, and it's, you know, like, like we say, you know, I, I wasn't really ever worse in that game. According to the review thing. No. I was, I was never really worse. Slightly here. But that's right at the beginning. After, this point was my lowest point. Okay? And, and from here, I'm doing fine. Doing alright. So, there you go. Um, I'm going to carry on playing it. going to carry on studying it. And hopefully, carry on winning with it. So, thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.